Hello, everyone, and welcome to Someone Should Have Told Me. Now today, oh my goodness, I've been thinking about how heavy negativity can be, how negativity can do so many things to you if you let it. Negativity, oh my goodness, I cannot stand negativity. Listen to me talking negative about negativity because it's negative. (laughs) <laughs> but <laughs> I just want to say that I believe that negativity will draw more negativity to you. So you must find positivity in whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that you think, because you want to push yourself to the positive And it may be hard at first because you're used to thinking negative, but you have to help the people around you. You have to help yourself to stay positive so we can keep our eyes on the prize, what we're trying to do and what we are trying to achieve in life. Negativity is not going to help you do that. It's going to hold you back. It's going to hold you down. And that is what it's meant to do. So we want to stay away from negativity. And no matter what, no matter what is going on, we must feel that there is something positive in what is going on. I personally look towards the positive because, you know, I feel like life is a big classroom and If you don't learn the lesson the first time, class is taught again and probably by a harder teacher. And we don't want to keep going over things and over things. So whatever happens, you got to think of the positive. So if something happens to me, the first thing I'm going to go to is, oh my goodness, what do I need to learn from this? Because I feel like everything is working for my good. It doesn't matter what it looks like, but it's something that I need to go through to achieve whatever I need to achieve on my journey. This is where you always look for the positive in no matter what happens. Now, I can tell you the worst thing that has happened to me in my life so far And I can also tell you the positive things about it. Now, okay, you guys know that the worst thing that has happened to me is my parents passing away 17 hours apart. And everybody looks at me and they say, oh my God, oh my God, that's, oh my God, how are you still standing? Because... It is amazing how it happened. And I look at it as a miracle. Now, if you don't know the story, go back a couple of podcasts. It is called I Witnessed Eternal Love. And I talk about it a lot in podcasts because it is the biggest event that has happened in my life that recently that in my whole life, that people think, oh my goodness. So I think of it as a miracle because my parents lived to be 88 years old. They would have been 89 had they lived one more month because they both were born in August. I look at that as being a miracle because we were expecting my mom to go but we were not expecting my father to go and he went first. I look at it as a miracle because they are not here in pain. They went together as I know that they wouldn't have wanted to be here without the other. And I look at it as a blessing and a miracle because we had one funeral, one funeral. We didn't have to 
wait until my father was depressed and maybe passed away six months or a year later. They went together. We were able to put them together and we were able to have one funeral and go through it one time. And that is how I am looking at it as being something that was positive. I took all that negativity and I made it a positive. I feel like negativity will draw more negativity and you will feel worse. I used to try to be upset about stuff and be like, okay, I'm bouncing back too fast. I get happy too fast. People take advantage of me because I don't stay angry and I try to get back to the positive as soon as possible. Even when I have arguments with my husband, I'm not going to spend all day being mad about it. I need to get back to my positive. I've said what I had to say. You know I mean what I say. And okay, let's get past it. Let's go. Even now, my husband, you know, husbands do what they do. They get on your nerves. And when he gets on my nerves and I just about to want to just slap him, which we know we can't do that, <laughs> but that is how I be feeling. Like I just want to strangle him. I have to think and I have to say, okay, let's go to something positive. And my husband is a diabetic and he had been through a lot of surgeries because he was not committing to being a diabetic. He was like, oh, I feel fine. I feel fine until it really got to him. And he had five surgeries. That was something that we went through together. So when he gets on my nerves right now, I laugh in the inside because I'd be like, well, thank goodness he's still here. Thank God that he's still here. He's in the land of the living or whatever. And I laugh about whatever it is that he is making me upset about, pissing me off about. And I just have to think about it and say, well, if he wasn't here, I would be upset. And I don't want to live without him. So while he's making me mad, I'm laughing at myself, laughing inside of myself, saying, thank God he's still alive. <laughs> I have to go with that because I'd be wanting to strangle him dead. <laughs> but... Thank God he's still alive. <laughs> so that is what I mean when I say find the positive in the negative. Find it. It's in there. You can always find it. Now, I was looking for a poem. <laughs> I was looking for a poem. And I know I always laugh when I say poem because my friend was like, what are you saying? Poem. I said, it's a poem. And she said, what are you saying? And I had to spell it for her. And she was like, it's a poem. And I said, I like the way I say it. It's a poem. Okay. So I was looking for a poem and <laughs> I found this Hello Poetry site. This preservation man out of New York City. And he wants people to follow him if you like poetry. I found his poem that says negativity becomes a change in the lesson. And I want to read to you what he was saying about it because it hit home of what I was trying to tell you guys in the first place. So, as I said, his name is Preservation Man and he's on the website Hello Poetry, which is spelled H. And then it's an asterisk and then L-L-O and it says poetry. Okay, so let's read it. It says negativity becomes a change in the lesson. Negativity is nothing more than lack of assurance and doubt. This is what this lesson is helping you to work out. It means take negativity and build it into positivity. Think of negativity being only a setback in how one feels. Usually, negativity comes from negativity given. 
It surrounds people that protect negativity because of circumstances that happen in one's life. They are the ones that always sees negativity, but never work in seeking life as positivity. You must look beyond your depression thoughts and suggest positivity. That negativity causes people to not succeed. Negativity becomes like a forbidden flood needing to recede. A person is focused on someone else's feed, but negativity has no place face to face. In fact, it's all a waste. The energy that one stresses on negativity could be utilized for constructive positivity. Negativity is a barrier like a detour, but you are only staying in one place. No movement in a hopeful pace. If you say today, the response would be tomorrow. But what one is saying, they are drawing on sorrow. Negativity is mental, but one must move into motivational. Motivational is the action that will start you on your way. Negative people now should be your gateway. This is your lesson for today. Go and achieve it in every way. Live on every day. And again, that was written by Preservation Man at the site Hello Poetry, and he is looking for someone to follow him. But I just thought that that was the greatest poem I could find that stressed what I was trying to say to you guys. You know, negativity can push people away from you. First of all, negativity is heavy. Uh, I tell my husband that, and I don't think he understands because I have to keep pulling him back to the positive. He still doesn't get it. When I say something to him and then he says something to me that's negative, I automatically feel like my shoulders are being weighed upon and it's like so heavy and I just wanted to stop. I wanted to shake it off because it's not helping nothing and no one, which will cause you to push people away from you. You know, say for instance, my friend, she is getting ready for her sister's wedding and she did not want to invite a whole lot of people because her sister's fiance is a little on the heavy side. Well, if the sister doesn't care, why should she care was the question that I asked her. And she said, my sister said the same thing. She said, do you want me to be with somebody that is really, really handsome and treats me like crap? Or do you want me to be with this guy that I love and who worships the ground that I walk on? We can work anything out. He is going to be the person he is, whether he is skinny or whether he is fat. So please stop being superficial and stop focusing on his weight and be happy for me. Well, she didn't get the message from her sister and she still was trying to keep it down from people like coming to the wedding because she didn't want people talking about her sister. That is what she said to me. She said, I, I am, I'm ashamed of him because he is heavy. And I told her, it doesn't matter what he looks like. If she is happy, then you be happy for her because she doesn't have to be happy and you want all your relatives to be happy. And the only thing that you're going to do by keep 
running your mouth about that is she's going to push away from you. She's not going to be running to, into your arms when anything happens. What you are doing is restricting your relationship because you are not in her corner. No matter what, you keep those thoughts to yourself and you be happy for her. What I do is pray for a better outcome because there's nothing you can do to make her not marry him because he's fat and he's treating her fabulous. She said, you're right. She said, they are like trying to step back away from me. I said, so stop it. It's not worth it. It's not worth the love of your sister because you're afraid that some people might talk about her husband to be being a little heavy. I mean, they got things going on in their life. Stop paying attention to what people are saying. Pay attention to happiness and positivity and turn that negativity around. Nobody has the right to talk about anything, about anybody's weight, about anybody's happiness, anything. Shut your mouth because your opinion doesn't matter in my life. Keep it to yourself. Keep that negativity all to yourself and be happy for me and let me be happy with you and be happy with my husband. This is my life. Like the sister isn't 20. She's more like 40. So really, if she can find the man that treats her like a queen and doesn't have any kids already and is a nice gentleman that he waited for you. Oh my goodness. How can you judge his weight? He's happy. He's Italian. Italians like to eat. It doesn't matter. I just want to say that you do not want to push people away when you are just holding on to all this negativity. I tried it. So I was going to just keep being angry because something had made me mad. And I just, I went to the store and I was like, okay, I'm going to hold this in my mind so I can stay angry and so I can be negative. And then something happened in the store that made me feel bad. I can't even remember exactly what it was, but it was maybe I was putting out some negativity. So people were giving me back negativity and it was a terrible trip to the store. And then I decided, why should I be negative and hold on to negativity when that's not really how I feel? So get out the negativity quickly and as soon as possible, get back to positivity. And now that I learned that lesson, no matter what is going on with me, I try to project positivity and inspiration and whatever that I can for the people around me. And then what I find is positivity draws people to you and just a smile. You don't know what is going on in someone else's day. And they don't want to hear about your negativity and they're trying to get out of their negativity themselves. So why not give a smile, say a word of kindness? Why not? What is it hurting you? Nothing. It does nothing to hurt you. Instead, it brings people to you. It makes you feel better. Then everybody is coming to draw some energy from you because you have such good energy that everybody wants a piece. And people that you don't even know notice that you are positive. It was a, a lady at work. I've only seen her in passing. I don't even know her name. I always speak, maybe say something funny or just a smile. Then the other day I see her. I don't know what her day is like. I just say, hi, how are you? And she says, you know what? You always have a smile and a kind word, no matter what. She said, I thank you for that. 
because it has helped me a couple of days and you didn't even know it. She says, you always, always have a bright outlook and I love coming past your desk because you always have that smile for me. And then my other coworkers, they're like, oh my goodness, do you just know everybody? Because everybody comes past to see you and says a little something. Then my other coworker was like, you know what? You are like Lucy on Charlie Brown. I think I'm going to put five cent sign on your desk for people that come by and want to talk and want to tell you their problems and just five cent because so many people are coming, but it's really not me. It's really just me trying to be positive for myself. And then the added attention of everybody seeing my positivity and coming to get some because it draws so many people. Who wants to be around the negative ninny? No one. Who wants to be around positivity? Everyone. Because it is uplifting. It brings you joy. It just good memories, good times. And then if somebody comes in that's negative, we try to bring them over to the positive. You'd be like, okay, that's enough negativity. Come on now. Come on over to the positive side because it's a better side. I want you guys to try. When those negative thoughts come into your mind, think of two positive things. When something negative happens to you, try to figure out why it's happening to you and what can you get out of it that is positive. Do not let negativity weigh you down because it's hard to get up. It makes it harder. The more that you pile on top, the harder it is. So whatever is happening negative, then you think of what's positive. If I can think of something positive for when my parents passed away, then you can think of something positive for whatever it is that you are going through. Just like I said, when my husband get on my nerves, I'll be like, thank goodness he's still alive and we still got time for happiness. You know, one second of negativity, considering I wouldn't be with him if he was totally negative. So one second of negativity I can handle and try to pull him out instead of piling more negativity on negativity that's going to be heavy on us all. So. Nobody likes negativity, whatever it is. What can we think of that is positive? I'm glad my parents did not have to suffer long and they have lived a wonderful life. They are on to the next step. They're on to the next journey. They completed their journeys here on earth and they went on to the next. I don't know what the next is, but it is the next. I look at it as a video game. Like they finish this stage, they're on to the next because their spirits live on even though that body was done. I appreciate you guys listening and I want you to know that negativity is not the way it's not the way to happiness. It's not the way to friends. It's not the way to any way that I want to go or anywhere that I want to go. It's the positive way that will make us happier and live healthier. Because I also feel that a lot of negativity after piled on can make your body sick because of that negative energy bringing on the negative vibes that are able to come into your life. You know, my, my sisters, they say, you know what? You don't never complain about aches and pains. I said, because I'm not getting ready to dwell on those. 
I'm not, you know, whatever. It'll be over if I forget about it. Because sometimes, you know, I have an ache or a pain. And I just keep on going. And before I know it, it's gone. The other day, my hip was hurting. Oh, my goodness. It's like, what? My hip is hurting? It's like, okay, this must stop. And I just kept on walking and doing what I was doing. And before I know it, I was like, oh, hey, my hip ain't hurting no more. What a blessing. Because I did not dwell on, oh, my hip is hurting. I got to go lay down. I got to go and put my feet up. Even though that's okay sometimes, too, when you know you have overworked it or overdone it. But half the time it's hurting because it's stiff from you sitting. So I believe that's what mine was from. And I worked it out and it was fine. So, guys, you got to find the positivity in negativity. You know, even when someone says something to you negative, then you pop back with something positive and then it just pisses them off. People have actually said to me, she cannot be this happy all the time. But yes, I am. Because that's the way that I choose to be. Is everything perfect in my life? No, not by a long shot. But I can accept what it is in my journey, learn the lesson, and keep on moving forward. Because that is what it's all about. You take too much time to sit and dwell in the negativity. And we don't have that time. You know how fast time goes. You know from if you have children, how fast they grow. How fast that you have grown. It still seems like. You should be younger than what you are. It was so funny. A young lady who just had her third child. She's probably in her 30s. And she said, oh my goodness, I went shopping for a pair of jeans. And the young lady that was waiting on me, she called me ma'am. She called me ma'am. And I started laughing because... It's okay. Every year, a new group of people come out. If you have had three children, then you can be a ma'am. Because that time, so many people have came out of high school. So many people have came out of college. And they get younger and younger as you get older and older. A new set is coming out. So therefore, it's okay for you to be a ma'am. A ma'am does not mean that you are old, but you have children and you need to be respected. It's okay. You don't have to consider yourself old because you are not right out of high school or right out of college. You have been there, done that, and it was going to happen eventually. (laughs) But you are still vibrant. What are they saying now? They used to say, 50 was the new 40. Now they're saying 50 is the new 20. Oh my goodness. So let's just keep going. Let's just be positive. Let's always look at things positive. And when someone calls you ma'am, say thank you for the respect because I am just a tad bit older than you are. And it's okay. It is not a negative thing. It is a positive thing because we are doing things, working on our journey. We are still vibrant and it's okay because actually her calling her a ma'am was positive that the girl had a little respect and her mother and father raised her properly. I appreciate you guys listening to me. I appreciate you giving me your time. I love you all so much. And I think you are starting to believe that because I really, really mean it. I am truly in love of humanity. And I just want humanity to be the best that it can be and be positive. Because if all of you are positive then the world is a better place. Again, love you all.
You can listen to me at iHeartRadio, at Pandora, at Prime Music. Of course, Pod Beings, which is where it all originates. You can listen to me on YouTube. You can listen to me anywhere that you get your podcasts or music, even Pandora. You can email me at sshtm podcast at gmail.com. I love you all. I look forward to talking to you. And I made it. My husband, he said he's going to do it with me. But if he does, fine. If he doesn't, fine. I am here for you guys. I love you. And I'll talk to you again soon with or without him with me on the podcast. Bye. Love you.